Hello Amazon sellers and enthusiasts, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving deep into the game changing tool and it is the category listing report. I've been using this report for years in my business and most of my clients have never even heard of it before. This report is a secret weapon that I personally use to upload new products for my own brands and my clients and it helps to fix listing issues. Even if your listing has been completely shut down, you can still access this file and upload it into Amazon, getting your listing fixed in minutes instead of spending days going back and forth with Amazon seller support trying to revitalize your listing. If you want to streamline your Amazon listing edits, you don't want to miss this. So basically the category listing report is just a big spreadsheet and I do Amazon PPC all day. I love spreadsheets and this allows you to see all the different attributes of each area of your listing. So you could have a file, make a change, upload it to Amazon and it's fixed instead of clicking edit and then you're going into the listing and then you get an error. These errors happen as you upload and it's just so much easier to manage than clicking, going back and forth, waiting for it to load, waiting, waiting for it to see if Amazon actually accepted it. Now there's tons of different secrets with this category listing report that I'm gonna dive into. And from now on, this is gonna be one of your favorite tools on Amazon. So pay attention, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get access to this report. So the first thing you wanna do is check if you already have access to this report. Most likely, if you've never heard of it, you do not, but I'll walk through that process anyways. You'll go to the menu here, you'll go down to reports, you'll go down to inventory reports. And once you're here, you'll be able to open this and you should see category listing report right here. If that's not there, follow this next step and I'm gonna show you how to get access to it. So what you wanna do is go up to this help button here, open this, and the next thing you wanna do is create a case with Amazon. I'm sure you've done this part before, but this is the exact way to do it for your category listing report and it's never failed me. So you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna to go to my issue is not listed. And then all you're gonna do is just type in a simple question. Can we have access to our, I like I always capitalize it, but category listing report question mark. And then I'm gonna hit continue. And then you could always hit product uh, or listing related. And then you'll scroll down. I don't like to get, to get on a phone call. This is super simple. Just go to email, put in your email address and hit send in this case will be created. And they may ask you to solve a puzzle. They always do Just hit submit. And the next step you're gonna see is the case was created. You can either click it here or go up into this help section. Once you're there, you can go to your case log. Now, once you're there, you're gonna see a pending Amazon action on that new case that I just created. So click on the view button. Now, once you click that view button, eventually you're gonna see Amazon did reply to your case and they're just gonna let you know you have access to your category listing report. It's temporary, but really it's not. You're never gonna lose access, I haven't. So once you have access, now we're gonna get into why is it useful and how you're gonna use it. And of course, where to find it on Amazon. So. The next step is to go to the menu up here on the top left. You're gonna go down to, like I said, reports, inventory reports. You're gonna open up this drop down here, go down to category listing report, and you don't need to add any date range. I never do. Click Excel. It's already all automatically pre formatted there. You don't need to really click anything and just click request report. It says it's in beta, but Amazon has had this report for years. So, once you are able to download it, you'll see category listing report right there. And all you're gonna do is simply click download. Now, once you're inside your category listing report, you might have to enable editing right at the top. Once you do, you can go in and start checking on different attributes of your listings and see the changes that you might wanna make. So one thing that they've recently updated is there's these plus symbols at the top. You do wanna open these up to see all the attributes. So there's special areas. Some of them have you know one space like that one, some of them have two, and the other ones have a lot more. So as you're opening these up, there's other attributes that might be hidden from your view. Now I'm gonna start to walk through some of the areas and you know how you wanna utilize this report. But for this product here, it's just a one ASIN. No, there's a so for this product here, it's just one child ASIN. There's no parentage, so there's no variations. But if it's a parentage, you will see that yes, it's a parent, and you'll see drops down here, parent or child. You're also gonna have the parent skew here uh, if it's a variation, and you're gonna have what type of variation it is. There's a lot of different areas, and then you'll be able to actually change the attribute. Let's say if it's a color variation, you'll see the color over here. You see gray is the color. So that's what will show up on the front end. And as you go through, let's say if it's a color and size, you'll also see size variations, but you have to open it up to see that. So pretty much this green area is where you're gonna see a lot of those different attributes for the variations. But you wanna let Amazon know like what types of variations. And depending on the category of your product, you'll have different variation types that are allowed by Amazon. 
to make sure you take a look at those. And there's other different areas. You'll see the hyphen when you, when there's multiple variations that are going to show up, right? If I want two areas to where maybe it's flavor and size, if I'm selling maybe a, um, a protein powder, right? There's sizes and there's different flavors of it. So I want to have both attributes. So you'll need to find the flavor, which I'm not going to have in this report. And you also need to find the size and make sure you update all of those on the, on the child variation level. So as you scroll through, just continue to open up everything. There's some areas you're just going to want to fill out because some of this stuff is going to show up on the front end and it's going to be available for customers to see like the light source, the brightness, the torque, if it's that kind of product, right? If it's a clothing one, you'll, you'll have a lot of other different areas as well. Just continue to open these up. You'll see dimensions area uh, all the way to the right here. You're going to see if it's, let's see, fulfillment. Let me open this up. There's an area to say if it's FBA or FBM. If you're not familiar, that stands for fulfillment by Amazon or fulfillment by merchant. So right here, you'll see this is Amazon North America. Default would be FBM, right? You could open up here, default, Amazon North America. Amazon North America is going to be your FBA option if you're selling in Amazon North America. And you can always just do, you know, usually no, no warning applicable. This product is specifically made in Vietnam. You can do the country of origin, all that information. But really, I suggest to go through, open everything up. A lot of the times you're going to get an error for the if the product contains a battery or not. Just say no if it doesn't. Simple as that. If you say yes, you're going to have to go through the process of adding all your battery information. And you're going to have to submit some specific battery files to Amazon after the fact. But Usually the stuff at the end, you're not gonna have to mess with very much. You have your list price here, which is important for like MSRP, but your actual sales price is going to be your offer all the way back to the left over here. It's going to be your price. Now you're always going to want to fill out your price. Even if it's a parent item, you still have to put a, your price in the file for some reason. It doesn't really make sense, but you have to add it in here. You can put a penny, you can put a hundred, you can put 700. It doesn't matter. No customer is ever going to see the price on the parent listing level. But for quantity, you only want to put a quantity if it is FBM, if it is fulfillment by merchant, where you're going to ship it yourself or have a warehouse to it. But if it's FBA, you can leave that blank. And for these particular two products, these are the same product, the same UPC code. They are the same ASIN, but one of them is FBA, one of them is FBM. So you will have dupl duplicates there. And really, you could update either one. Usually, I just update the FBA. But I always recommend having both FBA and FBM in case there's something happens with your FBA stock and you want to have that backup for FBM so you can always continue to sell and don't mess with that sales velocity. All right. And the last thing I want to talk about is these update. You have partial update, you have full update, and you have delete. You could delete the listing. That doesn't mean it's completely deleted forever. That just means Amazon is going to delete it from your inventory. It's going to show up as stranded inventory if you have FBA stock. And then you could re-update it again. Usually what happens is Amazon will require you to delete your listing for 24 hours. If Amazon has told you that, um, like let's say you have a problem updating your title, Amazon is not letting you. A lot of times they'll say delete your listing for 24 hours. This is a way I always delete it. I delete it this way, upload the file, wait 24 hours, switch this to usually I just do partial update and then it'll update any changes you've made in the file. I believe full update is when you update, it'll, it'll make the changes on everything in the file here. Okay, so usually partial update is the way to go. If anyone is better familiar with this update area, go ahead and correct me on that. And now I know and I'll update the video. So once you have either your partial full update or delete, you'll just go ahead and do file save as new or just, you know, just save the file. And then we're going to go into Amazon and upload this file. So now that we're back in Seller Central, you're going to go to menu and right at the top, you're going to see catalog. And once we go to catalog, you're going to see add products via upload and you're going to get all these different spreadsheets for listing loader files, download product sheet, price update. There's all these different templates. I usually just stick to the category list and report for most of my stuff. I'm not a catalog expert um, and I just do everything category list and report. I've really never needed to use these other reports. Category list and report has solved all my problems. So you're going to go to spreadsheet upload your spreadsheet and you could either browse the file or just drag it into here to submit the products. You don't have to put an email alert. You can put one. And once you get to this section, a lot of times Amazon is going to let you know some errors they detect in your file. Most of the time it still will work even with the errors. So 
So a lot of times I just submit anyways and deal with them after the fact because the file that they're going to let you download afterwards is going to spell out all the actual issues that Amazon had with the upload. So go ahead and click submit products. And once you've already submitted it, you can go to spreadsheet upload status. Now once you go to spreadsheet upload status, if you're lucky, you're going to see that it was done. You're going to have all the records successfully submitted and there's no actions that need to be submitted. But sometimes what you're going to see is that you're, there's actions that required. And what I re recommend you to do is download the processing summary so you can get a file and, and they're going to tell you exactly what errors need to be fixed on the listing. Now, once you go to the template area in that file, they're going to really highlight in orange exactly what areas you need to be fixed. And remember, you do want to open each one of those plus symbols again, edit those, re-upload it. And basically, you could just continue to re-upload it until it has been successfully uh, taken. And you should see those updates happen on Amazon pretty quickly. I would wait 24 hours before trying again. Usually uh, they do take. Now, if you keep doing this and it's not working, you could also create a case with Amazon and reference your batch ID. So when you create that case, let them know, hey, we uploaded this file, batch ID, copy that batch ID number, Put it in your case so they have something to reference so they can see the file and exactly what errors you're getting and hopefully in the back end they can help you to fix it so if you're having any trouble with your titles with your bullet points with anything on your listing not being taken by amazon and you keep submitting it in the back end but it's not showing up on the front end this is one of the best ways to do it and if you have a big catalog on amazon and you need to make a ton of changes all at once it's going to take forever to go to into each listing click edit go back and forth using the category listing report and any flat file on Amazon, this is the best possible way to do it. And that's a wrap for the Amazon category listing report. I hope you found this extremely helpful and now you can manage and edit your listings in minutes instead of hours. I have one quick ask for you. I make zero money off these YouTube videos and I'm just creating these to show you the shortcuts I've learned over the years and hopefully it's gonna take you minutes instead of years and it's just gonna save you a ton of time. The one thing I wanna ask you is just subscribe to the channel Share it with other people that you might find this helpful. Put it in one of your Facebook groups. I want to help as many people as I can. So thank you for watching. If you have any requests for any videos or if you have any issues, put them in the comments. I read every comment and answer every comment. So thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day. See you in the next one.